and welcome to today's episode of The New Woman. Kashilia UK and ABE TV brings to you The New Woman. This show brings to you topics, discussions, issues and solutions, everything related to women. Here at The New Women Show, we intend and aim to empower women from all walks of life creating a platform for experts to share their expertise and advice with those who are in need and creating a platform for women to become more aware, more awakened and more empowered. I'm your host Rita Sharma and today our guest is Suzanne Vertinen. Hello Suzanne. Hi Ritu, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Very welcome. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. And can I just say um, what amazing work you are doing? It's really, really inspiring. And thank you so much. We all come together to inspire and empower anybody we can here. So Suzanne Vertinen is the founder of Discover Change, a business development consultancy. She's a professional speaker and she's on a mission to create positive difference in people's lives. Her core values are personal development and innovation. Very interesting indeed, Suzanne. Very interesting. So tell us a bit about who Suzanne really is. Well, thank you. And thank you again for inviting me here and for allowing me to share my journey. And well, there's so much to share, as I'm sure you've heard that many times. Um, but in a nutshell, what I can say is that, first of all, indeed, my name is Suzanne Vertinen, and um, you're probably wondering where the accent is from. So I live here in the UK, of course, and we don't live too far from each other, actually. Uh, but I'm originally from Finland, and I've lived in the UK now for about 10 years. Um, and I've had a, quite a journey. So how I like to, you know, it's difficult sometimes to say, OK, you know, what I am or what my title is, but how I like to describe myself is probably I'm, a, I'm an adventurous um, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I like um, trying new things, um, and especially what you said there about uh, my values, mm -hmm. it's about innovation. And I love learning, studying, personal development. In my whole life, I've been that person who is always, you know, looking to grow, looking to get more curious. I've always been a curious uh, person for sure. And I think what happened to me in Finland, now I don't know if you've met a lot of Finnish people, but they are a very quiet bunch. You know, don't get me wrong, I love fin uh, Finland, Finnish people, yeah. but um, I'm a very chatty person, always questioning everything, even questioning the system or okay. poor teachers okay. and parents. <laughs> Um, but actually, you know, later on in life I've learned how to leverage that, but that's been quite a journey, you know, mm. to come to that point in life when you actually accept who you are. And, you know, rather than um, living in an environment where maybe asking lots of questions, being really social, big character, isn't always welcome in a certain way, but maybe it's not even that it's not welcome, but it's not in the right environment, mm. you know. So when you don't know where to put, use your strengths and weaknesses mm. in the right ways. And I used to think that my speaking, always questioning things, used to be a weakness. Okay. Well, well, the te a that's what the teachers <laughs> told me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I would say so. Yeah. Especially that I really learned to then later on in life. Now you said, uh, like you said earlier, that I'm a I'm a speaker, so I do all kinds of speaking at schools, colleges, universities, companies, um, events, business events, especially. Is to really how to kind of accelerate that personal development and personal performance and your mindset and motivation. Um, to really achieve your best, whatever you do in life. I've had lots of different jobs, 40 different jobs, in fact. So I've had quite Is a journey. Yeah. Wow. So after all of those jobs, I realized, you know, for me, um, I had to be an entrepreneur. I just could see that there's always, you know, I want to do things differently. Because you developed too quickly to contain yourself in one particular role. And you know what you said about not having a title? I am... Um, Quite my, my thoughts quite stuck on that because I understand that the best leaders don't have titles. They're leaders, they're thought leaders, they're change makers, they're innovators as you are definitely. And they carry on the work, uh, you know, through their action and inspiration. Like you said, you speak a lot about, uh, you know, topics that are relevant to people's lives in general. So best leaders are the leaders without title and they believe in working and leading rather than holding on to titles. N nothing wrong with having a title by the way. No, of course, um, but it's more about the movement, isn't it? About it's about the vision, where you're taking exactly. the business and if, if it's not a full-blown business, but as a, as a leader you can, you know, and 
we use that word leader and we talked about, let's talk about a little bit about leadership and maybe women in leadership and what is a leader indeed. Some people say, well, leader is someone who leads a team, but actually it doesn't have to necessarily be that way at all. It's leader is someone, an, an entrepreneur with a small business is absolutely a leader. You're leading a movement, an idea, um, selling your products and services to people. That's what leadership is about. An influencer is a leader. Absolutely. Um, a thought leader is a leader. Yes. Any change that you're bringing about by actions or you know whatever you're investing yourself in, you're a leader. You're Absolutely. leading something. Absolutely. And actually, everybody is a leader of their own lives, I aren't totally they? Agree with that. Um, and now I am really passionate about um, you know sharing my journey, what I've come through, because and I don't shy away from sharing things that you know where great challenges such as this. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but. Things that people can, many people struggle with these days, such as mental health, a bit of depression and anxiety that a lot of people come across, especially in the type of world that we live in right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, everybody wants to achieve lots of things. We want to do lots of things, which is great. But so often, and I don't know if you experience, I think you might have, we talked about this before, but also I have that, you know, when you're ambitious and driven and you want to do things and you want to do things differently and you've got questions. I've always, I've questioned things even, you know, what's the purpose of life and why do we get taught this at school? Having questions yeah. is an indication that you are an intelligent person. Um, that means you have something in your mind that is a bit, that is ready to challenge the system that you exist in. And that is what leaders do. First they question and then they find the answer to that question <laughs> and they apply it. And that's how change happens. If everybody carried on doing what people had been doing for centuries, I don't think we would have been where we are now. Especially talk about empowering women, especially talking about, you know, women being able to live respectfully with the sort of rights that we enjoy today. We all talk about suffragette you know, movement. We all talk about, we know about the, you know, the women liberation movement that, that hit us uh, a lit little while ago, I'd say. And unfortunately, even still in many parts of the world, women still don't get the respect and the treatment that they deserve. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uniform across. You see patches, you'll see patterns in every country where there are certain things. For example, we still talk about uh, equal rights when it comes to pay rates. And I always say it's a shame more than anything else that, you know, we, in 21st century, we're living in the age we're living in, the, the, you know, the, the height of technology we have now and everything else that we've done as a civilization, we're still discussing equal pay for women and that is a bit of a thing really. You're absolutely right and I think it's very important what you're bringing up because there are a lot of inequalities in the world um, and what we have to do is really think about where do we stand and what can we do? I'm always this person, okay, I know things, right? I read the books and I read the articles and I read a lot every day for hours and hours and I even to a point when it's like actually a little bit too much, you know, you have to know when to stop and actually implement, don't yeah. just read and absorb information. But actually is that coming from Finland as well, it is one of the equal countries in the world. It's the least corrupt country in the world, um, it's said to be, at, at least according to some statistics. But the fact is that um, there are still lots of inequalities. Yeah. Teachers might get paid, police officers might get paid, you know, a, a thousand pounds less. Um, it, it's not always the case, I'm not saying that, and it's a dangerous thing to generalise. However, what I am saying is that there are a lot of inequalities. Yes, there are. But what I would then say, especially us on the topic of leadership today, is that you, at the end of the day, really create your own reality. Mm -hmm. and. When I have been growing up and people say, oh, you're too ambitious, even at later in life, in my 20s, I heard about this thing as coaching, life coaching, business coaching. Wow, I never knew about that. Even a couple of my mentors told me, you're too ambitious. But my ambitions were, look, I've seen so much misery around the world and I see great potential in yeah. people. If I can help them, I'll do whatever I can. And I'll set this up and I'll do this and I, hey, you have to calm down a little bit. And I get it, I get it. I'm a bit of a road runner, you know, thousand miles, yeah. million miles an hour. But at the same time, we can't create change in our lives, in anybody else's lives, by staying in the shadows. Action has to be, you know, on the forefront of any um, change really, yes. any innovation, any revolution, anything, any development really. Yes, the thought's great, have, being aware of the need for change is great, having a plan is great, but unless you put it into action, Suzanne, I don't think it's going to work at all anyway. Well, well, you're absolutely right, and what we really have to think about, and you know, again, can refer to my background coming from the most amazing country, but they were quite conservative. 
nothing wrong with being conservative, but at the same time, I'm all about innovation. I like new ideas. I go on trips all the time to look for different things and, you know, do things just to kind of challenge my mindset. And when I realized that, you know, actually there are a lot of countries all over the world that have great opportunities and maybe I should explore. I lived in five different countries in five years. So I moved around a lot and I love that adventure. I, I speak several languages. Well, I wouldn't, not so fluently anymore. I would say my Spanish is still pretty good, but I lived in Spain, in France, in Holland, um, and then the UK. But the thing is, is that I was looking for that adventure and, you know, obviously those opportunities to grow and develop but what I realized is that I was actually stuck in a pattern okay. of looking the solutions for my life in the external you know oh, I, I couldn't stay in that country because their government wasn't very good or that job wasn't very good or actually you know these people didn't support me and there was always someone else to say oh I couldn't do it, it because of that actually so amazing that you bring this up because you know as I say uh, the, the whole thing that we do with um, this the new woman is around empowering is around bringing people to their own personal truth and that is the bottom line and each person who's come to this show has said that time and again and everyone and we've not discussed it like we've not discussed this before but you've come up with this yourself that your true reality exists within you the answers to your questions exist within you it's you who is causing what's happening around you it is you basically and rather than focus on the outside it's us we can change we can grow we can you know make ourselves better and that's and, and it's amazing that you've said it as well today <laughs> well it's and um, thank you yeah and absolutely and i think you know on that topic it's also a harsh reality to face yeah. because at the end of the day everybody's trying to do the best they can no matter whether you believe that about yourself or someone else or whatever they are doing yeah. everybody's trying to do the best they can with the resources they currently have and that's a really good rule to remember so mm -hmm. that we don't approach things with judgment yeah. Yeah. but don't we approach ourselves with so much judgment and self-doubts that is completely actually irrational we have to always remember and this is a hard thing to sometimes really face yeah. and t you know take responsibility over but that those all behavior that we currently display is learned behavior everything is learned behavior first comes your thoughts and then comes you know maybe speaking but then comes action mm -hmm. and that action but that action comes from somewhere else so when i realized that okay i was having this self doubt thing you know i was building i i wanted to start my business in the uk but you know what? All I kept thinking about, and some people even noted, oh, funny accent, ha, ha, ha. Who's going to take me seriously? You know, I'm going to do leadership and business development. I'm looking at my competition, and they're all, you know, these really successful men um, and some women. But let's say 5% women wow. and then big male speakers. I love the power talks. I want to, I I want to get in there, talk about leadership uh, in women, because you've just mentioned it yourself, 5%. And even if it's 10, let's say, let's just say you got the numbers wrong and the data was misrepresented. Let's say it was 10 percent, even if 15 percent, it's still not a par with what uh, it should be, really. Why are women so behind, Suzanne, you think, in leadership roles especially? Why is this the case? That's a really good question. And wow, that's something that would require probably several hours of analysis. But... In a nutshell, I would say it really does vary as well. I mean, again, taking Finland, for example, actually in politics, more than 50% are women. Okay. In a lot of CEO positions, there are women. So the situation is moving ahead, it's improving. Um, but of course, then we have a lot of different scenarios in, in many different countries and societies. And I think it is what we, you know, kind of discussed before and touched upon is that there are certain societal expectations yeah. and those rules or, or say expectations, they are very ingrained and there is nothing wrong with tradition. You know, I've always, I've actually been a person, oh, you know, it's all about innovation indeed, you know, ditch the tra tradition, but actually, uh, you know, we still have to have some roles and responsibilities yes. to raise our families, mm -hmm. to go to work, to, to do different things. But actually, how can we find balance that we can do that equally in, in a marriage or in a relationship or in the society? What I think has, uh, you know, there's a lot of historic, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there's a lot of historic events um, and even um, certain movements in the world that actually are, are in, a, in a really on the pedestal of defining women's mm -hmm. roles. And I'm not going to go into detail of which ones, 
because there are many of them. Yeah. Um, okay. And in general, you know how women are expected to look after children. Yes. Uh, and I think that's what kills uh, quite a few leaders. Um, it's generalization again, but you know, and naturally, instinctively, we are carers. Women yes. are carers instinctively, and we would when we get to prioritize. Of course, we'll put people who we love and care for first before our careers, before our work, uh, our own personal development, for instance, our children. Yes. And uh, being a mother myself, I can vouch for that. Nothing else can, you know, beat. Uh, how much important my children are to me. Exactly. And I think that goes uh, without saying that most of us feel like that. And, and I'm not saying that this is right or wrong, it's just how we are. Absolutely. And um, however... But, and, and actually, just to add to that, because in contrast, I don't actually have... I have made conscious decision not to necessarily go there as yet. Who knows? Maybe it's coming, maybe it isn't. I'm not planning. But all I'm saying is that making that decision as well, that also raises its own questions yes. and people might, oh, are you, are you okay? You know, come on, you know, talk, time's click, yeah. clicking kind of thing, exactly. you know, let's go. It's all sorts of expectations. Absolutely, sometimes. absolutely. And you know what? We have to be ready for those questions. Uh, what we need to do is really figure out what do you want to stand for in life? Whatever, whatever you want to do in life, as long as hopefully it never hurts anyone else, that's a good And it's absolutely, for a disclaimer, I think, Suzanne, <laughs> it's absolutely fine if someone wants to be a housewife, look after the household, raise the children like that is what they want to do. There's nothing wrong in that. I think that's as respectable as any other profession that anybody would take. What is more res respectable and honourable thing to do than raise new human beings, exactly. raise them with values to be respectful and kind but also constructive and become perhaps the leaders or change makers, not putting pressure on those children but you know, we are, whether we become leaders or change makers, whatever you want to call it, you know, we so often expect the environment to change, the government to change and all that, just like I was saying, and we can point the finger yes. at who we're blaming. Yes, yes. But actually, when you're pointing one finger at who you're blaming, three fingers point change at yourself. yourself. Exactly. And those three fingers, and this is what my first coach taught me, and that was a bit harsh. <laughs> um, he said, you know, those three fingers represent three words, and that is that I am responsible. So I am responsible for whatever happens to me in my life. And what we have to do is, you're not your parents, you're not your society, you're not whatever these labels are. So, you know. It goes back to what you said earlier, that whatever we are, whoever we think we are, it's all learned behaviour. And we have to unlearn that behaviour to learn a new behaviour, which represents us authentically. Yes. Right? And it is difficult, it is a really a tough job to do, it's a task, it's like it a tedious task. But it is once you get to that point where you can actually undo and then redo it in a new way, innovative way, as Suzanne would put it, uh, then, then you become an authentic leader, yes. then you've actually created what you were supposed to be. Well, absolutely, and, and that responsibility can indeed only be yours. That road can only be travelled by you, by you exactly. and you, and it can be a lonely road. We all know here that sometimes you've got to put that face on and nobody really knows what's going on and actually... Brave faces. Very brave face, and you know, people think, you know, oh, she's so confident and all that, but actually, you know what, so often, you know, in those leadership management positions, people have to put a face on. But what they are doing is they remind themselves of the vision. Why did they start? Why are they doing this? You know, you read to what you are doing and empowering people, creating TV shows, creating programs, partnerships, doing things in a unique way and looking at fresh, you know, looking at challenges as opportunities. Mm -hmm. But it takes time to develop that kind of mindset. Now, I've always kind of considered myself as a positive person. I said, oh, I'm a positive person. But actually, deep inside, there was a time in my life when I really wasn't. I hadn't resolved certain inner conflicts that I had, you know. One of the things that I always said, and I am this action person, really like, yeah, let's do it, let's do everything. And I always say yes to everything, and which comes with interesting consequences. <laughs> But the thing is, is that we have to uh, go through that journey of self-discovery. Um, and it can be a rocky road, but you know what? It's the most important journey we'll ever take. And I want to give a couple of tips very quickly uh, on how to do that, yes. because I can only really bring my own perspective. Everybody's got their own journey, and um, you got to you know, really embrace that journey. One thing is, and I, I like to share the four A's of change, but one thing, the first A of change is awareness.
you know, become aware of who you are, what you want, what your values are. Um, what do you actually want from life? You know, so many people say, oh, I want the money. I've, even, yeah. I've had uh, people come into my uh, consulting um, that um, are earning much more than me, but actually, uh, and, and some of them in their sort of pushing seven, eight figures. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that there is something is missing because we think, we assume that it's the material things that yes. bring that. And of course, the material bring, uh, things can bring that. There's a lot of choices and a lot of lifestyle choices that you can make. However, really the important journey is the internal journey, is to love what you do every day. Not in a naive way, hey, every yeah. good day is, you know, dancing on roses. It's not like that, realistically. However, when you really dig in deep, just like you've done, Ritu, as well, what really matters to me? What do people really need? What did I need? Mm -hmm. And when I realized, and I did my first ever personality test, um, and this really changed everything for me, um, and that personality test, um, there's 16 personality types and there's lots of different types of personality tests. And if you want to start digging deep and start that journey of self-discovery and transformation, do any kind of personality test. But one thing I always recommend is 16personalities.com. It's just entirely free. But when I did that present, uh, test for the first time and that personality test for the first time, I came out as the debater. So the debater, and it said actually less than 1% of women in the world are debaters. Wow. So when I'm reading this and it says you're challenging authority, you're challenging mm -hmm. your parents and you often look for innovative ways, strategic ways, and you know how to compartmentalize things, uh, because I've always been a, a keen reader. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to not necessarily be top of my class in front of other people, but for my, myself, because I wanted to do the best I can. So actually learning to use those, learning to convert that constant talking, but also the constant curiosity and debate, mm -hmm. challenge in the system, that now we are actually helping change makers, leaders build their own digital systems. So I learned a way that, you know, I am a debater, I can be a bit political, maybe not in, maybe not political, but let's just say I like being thought provoking. Okay. And when I've gone to schools uh, to do motivational talks and workshops with um, students of all ages, to be fair, but mainly from 12 to about 25, and I talk about my journey of change and how important it was for me to understand that I can't escape because changing all of those countries, I was escaping my own problems. Okay. Yes. You can escape as And you were taking it with you wherever <laughs> you went, thinking, oh, I'm going to get rid of this once I leave it. But that followed you because it was contained within you rather than on the outside. Well, absolutely, exactly. And I had to come to realize that actually it wasn't the environment that had to change, it was me. And it wasn't that I had to, all these expectations from other leaders, how they should do things. Exactly. Actually, it is me who can create this change. change. It is me who can be this positive source of information and knowledge and education As in my say, area. Create the, be the change you want to see in the world. Absolutely. So whatever scares you the most, what you are thinking about right now, if you're thinking, you know what, I should speak, I should speak, I should share my message, just get it done. When I wanted to become a motivational speaker, well, I don't know, become a motivational speaker, but start doing speaking professionally. And I realized that I don't take no for an answer. And because I've had all the excuses, I was thinking, what place in the world can I go to work where people need motivation than anywhere else? Um, and that was prison. So I went to work in the prison as a stress management teacher. And this job completely transformed my life. We must not judge others, ourselves, just on what's here. You know, we have to start approaching things, our problems in life, other people from a place of love rather than from a place of fear. Mm. So often I, I think that's the best advice that can be given to anyone who's looking to get on a journey of development, be it personal development, be it professional development, because eventually what happens is it's only when we become non-judgmental, as you said, Suzanne, that, you know, when we start seeing things from not how we see them physically, but from a place of love, as you see, totally, unconditionally giving out love, receiving love unconditionally, being love, because I thoroughly believe personally that each human being is nothing but divine love. And it's the conditioning that kind of corrupts us in time. Now, moving on from what we've been talking about, the spiritual stuff, I really want to get into the business world and ask you this question about women in business. Mm -hmm. And from your experience, because you work with men and women, Susanna, now, and you help people develop their business ideas and, you know, help them digitally to promote their ideas, etc. So 
From your observation and your experience, would you say the business world of a man is different to a business world of a woman? That's an excellent question and yes, I would say so. Um, it is changing. I think there's a lot of great, powerful women coming out and actually, you know, very courageous and saying, you know what, anything is possible and it absolutely is. We look at these women and men rising and they are leading by example. If someone else can do it, you can do it. So it, it is definitely possible, but there are a lot of, especially in speaking, coaching, training, men are very, very powerful. They focus on results, and I'm uh, by no means am I generalizing here. Again, it is dangerous to do okay. so, but all I'm saying is that they tend to focus on results. They know what benefits there are. They can be comfortable talking about money. Okay. They've often been um, the person providing for the family and dealing with those money aspects. So when a woman, maybe without those experiences or maybe without working in that environment for so long or in other positions in their life, it, they haven't developed that confidence to talk about money. Mm -hmm. So everything about business, really business success, and it's not necessarily all about money, but of course, in order for business to be viable, there needs to be transactions, there needs yeah. to be commerce, there needs to be partnerships, and, and you know that growth needs to be there. But for men, um, they seem to be a bit more head on. And what we women as well need to do, and this is where, you know, me understanding what my debater character can do, um, is in strategy. It's all about strategic approach. Is ladies should really, we should really focus more uh, also on the strategy side. Mm -hmm. So often women say, oh, I'm not a salesperson, I'm not a business person, but I love, I love helping people. Yes. That's what business is all about. You know, the most successful businesses are the businesses who are providing the greatest value. Mm -hmm. And it is about adding value to you and adding value to your programs and products and services. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be about you being that hero. It shouldn't be about, you know, if you're a coach or a speaker. Yeah, I remember I was told once that uh, women uh, are more emotion driven and men are more results driven. And that therefore the difference you'd see in the progress you know, financially that men make in the time period as, as compared to what women make. Can be, but absolutely. I think we can, you know, we both have things to learn from each other. Let's build exactly, and exactly. Let's make a and it's not. Future. I always say, you know, women empowerment is definitely not fighting against men or the men's world. It's about embracing who we are and embracing everything else that we have around us and trying to understand each other's perspectives. And what, once we know that, and Susan, you you mentioned it off camera that you know we need to understand each other's perspectives to create that balance where men know what women want from life. And women should be able to understand what men, um, you know, would like in theirs. And that's how we create harmonious, you know, relationships in all aspects of life. Well, you're absolutely right. And wow, what men and women want, do we sometimes know what we want ourselves? So, you know, that conflict can be... It's all, it's all about working and continuing to work on, on this. But Susan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sparing your time Thank to you come so and much. speak to us about... So, and, and everything you've said has resonated with what we are about here at The New Woman. So I'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Rita, so much for uh, asking me to join and I really look forward to being part of the show and can I just say one more thing before we finish is that really importantly whatever you want to do uh, get clear on what that is and don't let anything stand in your way because anything is possible I thought that my accent or whatever my background is going to stand in my way actually that being a, a change management consultant, bringing innovation, fresh ideas, different ways of doing things, it can only work in my benefit. Yes. So whatever you perceive to be that weakness, um, it actually often is your strength. biggest strength. Yeah, so start to look at things differently, look at your own potential differently, focus on growth, um, and connect with like-minded people. Listen to ladies like Rita who is bringing you the, the, the tools and strategies to make a difference. And actually, life change doesn't have to take years, weeks, months, or even days. It can be instant if you just make a commitment to start fresh. So thank you so much, thank you so much Rita, and see you soon again.